he laughed and said, you don't want to die for the bank's money, do you? It was a bold and violent bank robbery caught on tape. It really took me by surprise at how violent this actually was. I can imagine how frightening that must have been. At the center of it all, a former honor student who planned the whole job from the inside. It is a lot of money, and it was quick. But when one robbery becomes a crime spree taking down hundreds of thousands. We got away with it once. Let's go back and do it again. That kind of excitement, it's dangerous. Thrills and romance turn to violence and betrayal. OK. He just used me. And law enforcement turns up the heat. It was just a matter of time before they hurt somebody. I was on the brink of losing my mind. For the first time ever, the criminals who planned it. I was like, look, if you're going to do this, this is how you need to do it. And the cops who hunted them down. I poured over that video hundreds of times. Come together to tell their own stories as we follow the money and dissect a near-perfect crime plagued by a simple yet fatal flaw. Now that's the nail in the coffin. This is Super Heists. It's an unusually busy Monday morning at Wells Fargo's Lower Marion Branch in the affluent suburb of Southeast Philadelphia. Among the four tellers working is a young part-time student fairly new to the job. That morning, I was working from 8 o'clock when the bank opened until just about 11 or around the time that the robbery had taken place. In bursts a trio of masked gunmen, ordering customers to the floor and demanding cash. I just felt like time froze for a minute. And I had to tell myself, this is really happening. While the robbers move confidently across the teller stations, Kalia Kane cowers under her desk like the rest of her colleagues fearing for their lives. But she's no innocent victim. In fact, Kalia Kane planned every last detail of the perfect bank heist. Kalia Kane interview, Marker. I was 18 at the time. There's several stories out about how things happened and what took place and why it happened. And they're just the furthest from the truth. You're here today to set the record straight. Yes, setting the record straight. I was born in Ohio. We ended up in Pennsylvania when I was about two. You fast this girl, it's <laughs> your big break. My name is Jessica and I'm Kalia's older sister. My oldest sister is seven years older than me, and growing up, our family, like, epitomized the American dream. The Kane family was affluent, loving, and supportive. It was hardly the upbringing one might expect of a future criminal mastermind. My mom worked with auditing. My dad was actually in the FBI. We had a very fortunate childhood. People was kind of like, I want that life. You know, a house on the hill, pool in the backyard, little fluffy white dog. Great parents, very active in the community. Everything but the picket white fence. It was Stan. I've always enjoyed school. I've always been an honor student. I literally got accepted to every college I applied to, and I decided to sit out the first semester until I secured employment. That fall, Kalia sees a job listing that instantly catches her eye. Wells Fargo was hiring. The first thing in my mind is, I'm going to get to wear that suit. She was excited about getting to wear, like, business clothes. It was the first step in adulting, and I was just ready. So Wells Fargo was. Wells Fargo was a multinational bank worth $1.77 trillion in assets. With more than 7,000 branch locations around the country, each branch sees hundreds of thousands of dollars come in and out each day, most of it stored in the registers, leaving some branches more vulnerable than others. On any given day, I'd have at least $85,000 come to my teller station or go from my teller station, at least. These are the banks where people are rich and well-off. It's a community bank. Kalia relished her first adult job, 
and the trust her new employer put in her. But a chance meeting turns her head in a different direction. I was walking to the bus stop, and I was approached by a young man who introduced himself as Malcolm. We exchanged a few words, and he wanted to introduce me to his friend, Mark. Their full names are Marquise Wilson and Malcolm Moore. Mark says he works as a youth minister with a local church. Kalia is immediately smitten. This guy, you know, he wooed her with Bible scriptures. I would say I was definitely boy crazy. He was very handsome. Tall, dark skin. He had several tattoos. He looked fun. He looked alive. I did feel like it was the stars aligning. A lot of this, I think, does stem from daddy issues. Around that time, uh, our stepfather passed away. I think she wanted the affection and the attention and the love of a man. And Mark was at the right place at the right time. So he gives me his number, and he tells me to contact him if I'm interested. So I contacted him, and I asked about the scriptures that he had, and that's when everything had come out. And there were no scriptures. He just thought I was attractive, and he wanted my number. It's a hell of a pickup line. Isn't it? Over the next week, their romance begins to blossom. He let me know he was working in the music industry and just waiting on his big break. He shared some of his songs with me. He was definitely onto something. And it was after listening to one of his songs that I told him I loved him. It, it literally all happened so fast. Mark was recording songs and music videos under the name Carpe Diem, but the studio time was costing him money he didn't have, and Kalia soon notices his money troubles. So our first date, I did end up paying, and it, it did rub me the wrong way, just because I wasn't raised that way. Later that night, Mark peppers Kalia with a series of unusual questions about her workplace. When he was dropping me off at home, he asked me, do banks really hold a million dollars? Are there really die packs? How much money is in each teller drawer? And then he followed up with, can I rob your bank? I thought it was a joke. So I just brushed it off. But Mark makes it clear that his proposal of a high dollar bank heist is no joke. Alarmed, Kalia does her best to try and dissuade him from committing the crime. You know, why don't you just get a job? Everybody's doing it. And he just, he wasn't willing to work for it. He saw bigger dollar signs by going in the bank. But when Mark shares his plans for the heist, Kalia realizes he's all but clueless on how to pull it off. Every plan he proposed, it was like Swiss cheese. There were so many flaws in his plans. Two things became abundantly clear. Kalia could not talk the man she loved out of robbing a bank, and that Mark's plan would only get people hurt and him arrested. It came to a point where I was like, look, if you're going to do this, this is how you need to do it. Because all of that is, it, it's not going to work. I think a lot of times her being naive, it allows her to get taken advantage of because people see that and they prey upon that. It's like you're just really young and you don't know. And just like that, two weeks after meeting her new boyfriend, the love-struck 18-year-old has signed on to become a bona fide master thief. The next day, Kalia, Mark, and Malcolm meet up in a downtown hotel room to hash out a plan. The plan is simple. On the day of the heist, Kalia will be working the register while her accomplices stand by in the parking lot. On her signal, the men will burst through the front door, wearing masks and brandishing guns. After subduing the customers, they will clear the registers of all cash and escape into a nearby getaway car. I was to be treated like all of the other tellers. The gun was pointed in my face just like everyone else. I knew it would take officers a little under 10 minutes to arrive at the bank. It was important for the team to be in and out as quickly as possible. Kalia's chief concern was that nobody get hurt, so she planned the heist around a typical lull in business. I didn't want any customers in the bank because they didn't sign up for that. 